Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. It is a gorgeous day out here today. I have set up my umbrella to provide a little shade so I could film outside because it's just too nice to sit inside. It's almost too nice of a day to talk about the topic that I wanna to talk about today, which is um, the dangers of not using a professional tiny house builder if you're going to use a builder and not build it yourself. There are some things to look out for um, and today I can just point some things out to help you understand why it's so important to work with somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to tiny houses. Oops, I can see, I can see I'm going to have to hold on to my skirt in this one. Anyways, if that is interesting to you, stay tuned. Tiny houses are really hot right now. They have been for a couple of years. I don't think it's dying down anytime soon. And so that means that um, scams, unprofessional builders, you know, people who are a bit unscrupulous and don't have your best interests of heart at heart are entering the market. Um, and that is something that you really have to think about when you're deciding on a builder for your tiny house. The reason that I went with my builder, the reason that I interviewed builders was to be sure that I didn't find myself in a situation where um, I had lost a bunch of money and didn't have either uh, a safe house or the house that I wanted. The builders that I'm talking about are not your professional, ethical builders. Um, builders of foundation built, standard size, large size houses will understand whether or not the tiny house market is for them and whether and make sure that they educate themselves if they decide to go into the tiny house market. Uh, the ones that I'm talking about are the people that are semi-professional or people who have built a couple of houses and they see that this market is hot. They see that they can uh, make a quick buck and so they decide to get into the market um, thinking that building a tiny house is no different than building a foundation built house and that is the number one error that they make um, and the number one thing that you need to consider when you're choosing your builder have they built tiny houses before have they built multiple tiny houses before how many have they built and how long have people been living in their houses it's really important to ask those questions and get honest answers it's also really important to talk to people who are living in the houses that they've built and have been living there for multiple years. Talk to people who have lived through every season in these tiny houses um, to make sure that they're built properly and safely and uh, get a feel for how the builder deals with any issues that do come up and uh, how they manage the build as far as um, expectations and costs. So why is building a tiny house so much different than building a foundation built house? I mean, you're still talking about studs, you're still talking about siding, flooring, electrical, plumbing. Yes, you are, but you are working with square inches versus square feet and you're also working with uh, a building that is going to move and that means that there are considerations that are unique to tiny houses. And builders who have never built a tiny house, who are just starting out building tiny houses, have a lot to learn about those considerations. The number one consideration that I think is really important to be sure that your builder understands and has experience with is air quality in a tiny house. Because you're talking about such a small space, air quality becomes even more important. When you're using materials that off gas in a tiny, tiny space, obviously that's gonna affect the air quality uh, a lot faster and more than in a huge building in a huge space and if you are the type of person that is sensitive to chemicals and off-gassing there's going to be a potential for a much bigger impact to your health and I would argue that it's not healthy for any of us even if we don't have 
you know, um, identifiable sensitivities. We're all sensitive to those things. We're all breathing in that air. So managing air quality, managing the um, materials that are used in such a small space is really important because these spaces are very airtight. Which brings me to my second point, managing moisture. If you've watched any of my videos, <laughs> you already know that I think that moisture is the number one enemy inside a tiny house because every time you breathe, every time you cook, every time you shower, you are releasing moisture into the tiny house. If you have a propane stove, appliances, natural gas, they also release moisture into the air inside your tiny house. And because the space is so small and because it's, uh, it should be insulated so well and built so well, it's going to be very airtight. If that's not managed, then it can cause a, a big, big problem with mold and rot because of the moisture. So your builder needs to understand that. And if they are experienced in building tiny houses, they've already got a plan for managing that. As you know, I have a Lunos Air Exchange System, which manages not only air quality, but moisture uh, content in the air. I would not have built my tiny house without it. It was an option that was provided by my builder. It wasn't a standard option. And in my opinion, it should be a standard option for all tiny house builders in their houses. It should be a non-negotiable. But because it's an expensive option, it wasn't standard. It was an, uh, an, an additional option that you could choose. I was never gonna build a tiny house without it. But uh, a builder who doesn't know what they're doing won't take that into consideration. And that could be a very, very uh, dangerous situation for you, uh, for your health, and a very expensive thing to try and fix after the problems have occurred. So, you know, that's, another, that's something that a professional builder, a builder who's built multiple tiny houses will uh, know, they'll understand, and they'll have a plan for mediating when they're building your tiny house. Whew, it's getting warmer out here and I am starting to perspire. Anyways, the next point would be a, a weight and your trailer, the rating for your trailer. I've heard some horror stories about builders building on trailers that are not rated for the weight of the house that they're planning on building. They're certainly not rated for the weight of the house plus the contents that are gonna go into the house, such as appliances and obviously your furniture and everything that you own. And so um, that can be catastrophic because you're taking this house down the highway at some point, usually multiple times in its lifetime. And if you don't have a trailer that is rated for the house, the, the house that you want to build, then it can cause some serious problems for you. Oh, my neighbor's air conditioning just kicked in. I hope that, I hope that's not too loud, but at least there's no lawnmowers going in the background, which is the first time today, which is why I'm filming it now and I'm going to keep filming. So you need to think about that, the right type of trailer, a trailer that's built to handle this kind of weight going down the highway. My trailer is a triple axle trailer. It's a gooseneck triple axle trailer. That was really important to me because she's not a, she's not a small girl. She's 37 feet long, nine and a half feet wide. So I knew that she was gonna be heavy and that the trailer needed to be appropriate for it. However, uh, my builder already knew that. I didn't have to worry that my builder didn't know what she was doing when it came to choosing the trailer for the house because first of all uh, she's experienced she'd built multiple tiny houses before mine and had a very good understanding of what these things can weigh when they're all done and when the furnishings and all of the fixtures and appliances are in so that's number one and two she was working with a, a trailer manufacturer that was experienced in building trailers for tiny houses on wheels two very important things that a new builder an inexperienced builder uh, might not know or uh, a less than honest builder might care about they might not care about that. They might just go with the cheapest trailer that they can get because they want to keep the price down. Choosing the proper trailer so that the uh, axles can handle the weight of the house. Going down the highway uh, is really important. And unfortunately, I mean, it just, it's catastrophic if your builder doesn't know what they're doing and they choose the wrong trailer. 
when something bad happens on the highway, they will choose the right trailer, they will choose the right manufacturer to make sure that the foundation of your house, even though it's on wheels, is as secure and safe as possible. So to go along with that would be the um, plumbing and heating that a professional is going to put into your house. You know, when you build a foundation built house, you make those fittings and then they stay. <laughs> the house doesn't move unless there's an earthquake, uh, but there's none of the stress on those fixtures and those fittings that come with a house that moves. Because this house is going down the highway, obviously there's stress on each one of those points when it comes to the, the plumbing and the gas and things like that. So uh, a professional builder who's well-versed and experienced in building tiny houses will have taken that into consideration, the fact that uh, the house is gonna move and just made the proper adjustments. I'm not an expert. I won't even begin to speak on what those adjustments, those special considerations would be. All I know is it's important because you want a house that is safe and secure. And if something goes wrong, at, 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 in best case scenario, it's an expensive fix. Worst case scenario, it's a very dangerous problem. It's my firm belief that a builder who's built multiple tiny houses has learned a valuable lesson with each one of those builds. And that's why it's good to go with a builder who's built multiple tiny houses because then you get to benefit from all of those lessons without having to be a uh, part of the lesson. And I think that that's pretty important. I've already talked about a little bit about the fact that when you're building a tiny house, you're working in square inches versus square feet. I mean, yes, technically you're working in square feet, but because it's such a small space, Every square inch matters. And some a builder who's experienced in building tiny houses already knows that. And they've already got those great ideas for building in uh, storage and uh, using every nook and cranny in your house. The bookshelf that is um, on the back wall of my loft, as you come down the stairs, so if I'm laying in bed, I can see it. That was my builder's idea. I had come to see the tiny house under construction and she said, do you want me to leave that open for a bookshelf because that'll be, you know, a great use of space. And I'm like, absolutely. I wouldn't have thought of that. And I would have lost the opportunity to have this beautiful display space and bookshelf. Every nook and cranny that she could put storage in, she did because she knew what she was doing. She had built multiple tiny houses. I think that's really important and something that someone who's experienced will already be thinking about because they are thinking in square inches and that is unique to a tiny house. I've heard multiple stories of uh, builders who have advertised themselves as tiny house builders and uh, advertised really low prices for building a tiny house because they think it's an easy thing to build. They've built large houses before, they think that building a tiny house is gonna be easy and, and they don't understand the specifics of building a tiny house, the unique characteristics of a tiny house. And so they quote a low price and then the build starts and uh, there's all these unexpected costs, charges, and before um, some people know it, they've got one of two horrible situations that have happened. They've got uh, a builder who's disappeared with their money and they don't have a tiny house at all, uh, which is just so incredibly sad. Or, and this would be the good situation in this scenario, they have the, uh, a partially built tiny house that is not safe, not livable. They've lost a bunch of money and they have a house that isn't finished uh, and isn't nearly what they wanted. And I remember hearing a story of that happening to a couple and when they took this partially built, horribly built tiny house to another builder, a builder who did know what they were doing, the only thing the builder could salvage was the trailer. And they had to reinforce that because it was, the trailer wasn't really built, rated for the tiny house that they wanted, but nothing else could be salvaged. They basically had to tear it all down, reinforce the trailer, and then start the build again. And they didn't do this for free, and they shouldn't, right? They didn't create the mess. But these homeowners now had to spend that money all over again just to get something that they could live in. And that is incredibly sad, frustrating, and uh, disgusting. But it happens more than you think, 
And so when you uh, are interviewing builders, if you decide that you're going to go with a professional to build your tiny house, you know, do your research, interview the build multiple builders, get referrals, talk to people who live in their tiny houses, see those tiny houses, ask those questions. Oh, now my neighbor is starting to mow, yay. Okay, he's gone around the corner. I'm gonna finish this up really quick. As I was saying, what the situation you don't wanna find yourself in is uh, having spent a bunch of money, put a bunch of money down to start your build, and then end up with a builder who has taken off with your money and left you with nothing, or left you with a partially built house that is horribly built and not safe to live in at all. My advice to you would be to go to a go with a builder who has built more than a couple of tiny houses. You might meet a builder that is building beautiful tiny houses, but they've only built one or two. And I'm not saying they, they won't know what they're doing and they won't be building fantastic tiny houses. Um, and if you're really comfortable with them and you want to go ahead and use them, then uh, you know I wish you well and, and I hope that it all works out. Um, I would not have gone with a builder that hadn't built more than you know four or five tiny houses. I would not have gone with a builder where I couldn't talk to somebody who was living in their tiny house and ask them the questions about um, what kind of service there was, uh, as if something did go wrong, how did their builder uh, react and respond when there was an issue with the build. Those are really important questions. So just be careful guys, uh, I, want you to, I want your build to go well, so just make sure you're doing the research up front and choosing the right builder for you. Hope this video was helpful, I hope you're doing well. I have some pretty exciting news that I'm gonna share with you next week, next Sunday. I hope you'll be as excited about it as I am. It's just kind of a, a new adventure for me that I really wanna share with you guys. So I look forward to doing that next week. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, a large portion of my viewers are still not subscribers. And if you want to help the channel out at all, if you find value in the videos at all, the one thing you can do that really makes a huge difference is to like and subscribe because um, YouTube likes that and then it recommends the videos to more people. That means that we have more people as part of our family. Anyways, take care everyone and I'll talk to you next week. Dude, I'm almost done.